So think of foolishness in terms of, of, what it, of what it is, not just what we think it suggests. So foolishness is not stupidity. A person can be very smart and still be very foolish. Um, think about where we apply that word, that someone's a fool. Yeah. Someone ignorant, someone uh, not very willing. Someone who's not very willing. Um, historically, we even connect it to somebody who's, who's funny, like a, a fool is someone who, who dresses like in motley and then you know, like in different colored things and is supposed to entertain people. And so we come across foolish people all the time. And the funny thing about being the fool in a king's court is that the fool is very smart, actually. In, in other words, you, could, you have to be smart to be a comedian. You have to be smart to be funny. Um, and I mean that like in a, in, in, a, in a grand scale. Not that you have to be smart to say something funny, or better yet, you, you can say something that makes people laugh. But the fool is somebody who actually will kind of cause the derision towards themselves. In other words, they're being silly, they're, being, they're, they're doing stupid stuff, but the, the laughter is towards the person. It's like in a, in a classroom, for example, sometimes a person will make a joke, it's not funny, but everyone laughs. Why? Because they're not laughing at the joke. They're laughing at the person who said it. There's a difference that's there. And, if, and, and you'll, by the way, you'll see comedians who do this as well. When Dave Chappelle makes jokes, he doesn't make jokes of, just so that people will laugh at, at him. He makes jokes because, that make people laugh. Like, I'm trying to remember the guy um, who's a comedian. He died just a few years ago. And um, his thing was supposed to be that he was always high on stage. I remember his name, he had like longer hair. And that sucks, he's one of the biggest comedians in the world, and today I just do not remember his name. Um, anyway, his whole shtick was that he would say stupid things and people would laugh at him. So you can still make people laugh in these two different, uh, these two different directions. The laughter can be towards out there, or the laughter can be towards, towards here. And we typically think of the fool as the person who calls the derision kind of upon themselves. So a fool here is not just somebody who's stupid. It's somebody who's, who's ignorant, yes. Um, and you can be ignorant in both of these two ways, by the way. You can be arrogantly ignorant. You think you know it all, and that's funny. Or you can be willfully ignorant, meaning you, choose, you just choose not to know. And this is where, I don't know, it gets kind of, you may, they can almost blend after a while. Like, for example, if you're in a class, like I hear this all the time in a class, people will say, like, uh, with algebra, you know, why do I have to learn algebra? Good question. Why do you have to learn algebra? To pass a class. Maybe to pass a class. No, but, but it's a real question. People will ask that kind of stuff all the time. Why do I have to learn chemistry? Why do you have to learn chemistry? Pass high school. Maybe to pass high school. But the point is that if you, if you have to ask, so for example, I remember growing up, um, like my mom would never let me get away with saying stuff like that. If I said something like, um, I never said this, but if, if I said something like, oh my god, why, do we have, why would we have to wear school uniforms? My mom would always stop me and go, well, Stephen, tell me, why would you have to wear school uniforms? And I would say, I don't know. So my mom would stop me and go, well, you're, acting, you're, you're talking like you think it's a stupid thing. So explain to me, why would you have to wear a school uniform? And a lot of people, I'm sure, would stop at that point and go, okay. She wouldn't let me stop there. She would go, no, I need you to explain to me now why it is that the school would make somebody wear school uniforms. In other words, what it does is it forces you to step outside of your head, and it forces you to now understand the perspective of somebody who has a completely different perspective of you. To understand, well, why do you have to wear a school uniform? So what would I have to do? I'd have to go find out, <laughs> and my mom wouldn't let it go. She'd ask me the next day, did you go talk to a teacher? Did you go talk to mistress? What did they say? And it forces you to, again, it forced me to always have to either, one of two things, either shut your mouth, because anybody can just spew words that don't mean anything. Or, go find out why it is that you disagree with this and that you disagree. Because what we find oftentimes is that what we're saying is, I don't, want to not, I don't want to have to wear a school uniform. I don't want to have to take algebra. I don't want to have to take chemistry. But the truth is, is you don't know what you don't know. Well, why would you have to know chemistry? I don't know. I don't know, but is it, is it really such a horrible thing to, to know something that you don't absolutely have to, have to use every day? Are we, are, we, are we really going to say, I shouldn't have to learn? Is that, is anybody, did any of you guys ever sit there and admire someone and just go, I just love listening to them talk because they're so stupid. 
You know why I love this person? Why? They have a great heart. Oh no, my God, they're so stupid. It's fun. No. We intuitively know that it's a good thing to be smart, to be intelligent, you know, and, and to be educated is even better. We admire people for their intelligence. We, we admire people for what they know. You ever make fun of somebody for knowing stuff? <laughs> you sit there and you're like, you know, I don't know. Like, <clears throat> what's the thing I heard? Um, this is an old thing. Like, like what color was, was, was um, Washington's white horse? I don't know. And I've heard somebody answer that question by saying, I don't know, was it black? Yeah, and the, you're right, and we all, if, if you got that, then you think that that's absolutely a foolish thing. If you don't understand why that's a foolish thing, guess what? You just might be foolish yourself if you don't understand why that's a foolish thing. But we would never look at that person who says, well, his white horse was white. And we wouldn't, we, we, we wouldn't go, oh my God, you're so stupid that you know that. No, we understand that being intelligent is a good thing because being smart helps you navigate life. When will you ever have to know chemistry? I don't know. I don't know. I do know people, though, who study chemistry, and they use it constantly, all the time. I never use chemistry. Guess why? I don't know chemistry. If I knew it, I bet I'd be dangerous. <laughs> now, I'm thinking of all the things I could do with chemistry. Wow, I could... I, I could, I could yeah, I could enforce my drug empire with nuclear bombs, man. Hell yes! Um... You never think about that? Like, what if Pablo Escobar got his hands on a nuke? What if what? Does any, uh, what if Pablo Escobar got his hands on a nuke? Does anyone think he wouldn't have used that thing? It would. Oh, heck yeah, I got have used it immediately. My God. Anyway, um, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's just kind of like, when would you ever use philosophy? I use philosophy dozens of times every single day. Why? Because I know it. If you know it, you use it. If you don't know it, it would never even occur to you to use it. And you would never sit there and go like, Man, I wish I knew chemistry right now. You wouldn't even, because you wouldn't even know what you don't know. You wouldn't even know that chemistry could be helpful in this context. You don't know when philosophy is going to be helpful. You don't know, like, like, um, like, for example, in this class, we make a mistake when we think that what we're studying is the actual subject matter. Um, the subject matter can be, can be interesting and it can be helpful. Like right now, what we just finished, uh, the gift of fear, is that helpful in some way in your life? It should be. It should be, either for yourself and if you walk around and you think, like, uh, I'm not going to be a victim, well, then, yeah, you should go back and read that chapter again. Because you're exactly the kind of a person who could become one. But even if you, even if you want to sit there in your arrogant foolishness and say, it could never be me, okay, fine. Maybe there's somebody else in your life who, 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 um, who, who could become a victim. And now you've got the, the specific detailed information that you could pass along to them. So even if information is not useful to yourself, even if education and learning is not useful to yourself, it could be useful to somebody else who you pass it along to. But beyond that, what we're studying in this class is not just that specific content. I'm not just trying to get you to know the stuff that's on the page. So don't ever look at that and go, man, won't I ever have to know, um, you know why child, uh, what childhood trauma leads to? Okay, you, let's just say that you're going to stay willfully and arrogantly foolish. Fine. But there are other people... But, but it's, it's, good, it's a good thing to know so that if you ever become a parent yourself, you don't traumatize your kids. But of course, you, it would never even occur to you that you're doing it. Like I was just thinking about um, somebody who I heard about, it um, wasn't one of my students, I heard about this person a couple of years ago whose um, father was, was abusive and he had to call, had to file a C, uh, it wasn't me, another teacher had to file a CPS report. And I was just hearing like, just very small details about what was happening. And I was just thinking like, like, who the hell as a parent does that and doesn't think you're going you're gonna to have horrible implications on your child? And that's a person who I imagine would probably say, dude, my dad did it. I'm fine. <laughs> you're not fine. Yeah, you are absolutely not fine. And you're making the world a horribly worse place. And that's not just foolish. Of course, to hear that person say that, we can all laugh at that person and go, oh my God, you really think you're okay. You know, but understand that. Just because it's foolish, it's having some very, that, that, that doesn't mean it's not having some very serious implications on the people who they're interacting with. And it's not even just their child. I bet that that's probably that person who, who steals your parking space and probably cuts you off in traffic. And probably if you drop your wallet in, in line at Walmart, that's probably the person who walks up behind you and takes the wallet and doesn't tell you. I bet that person has a whole long laundry list of behaviors that make the world a worse place. And then when they're done making the world a worse place, they go home at night and they beat their child just to make sure that they can make their family and their household a worse place. And they probably go through it, 
willfully ignorant or arrogantly thinking, ah, okay, whatever. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. That's one person. Think about how many horrible interactions that person has in a day that makes the world the worst place. And now multiply that out by all of the people who are, who are living this way. And it's pretty broad, man. And if you want to make the world a better place, you have to fight that. You have to combat that. I'm not saying you have to punch the guy in the line at Walmart. What I'm saying is that you have to now absolutely live in a completely contrary way to that person to undo some of the damage that that person is doing. And that's that constant fight. You could call it the ancient fight between good and evil. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't know that it's that... That, that's that um, no, I won't lie about that. I do know that it's that big of a deal. It really is. Just think about when someone says or does something nice for you, how much of an impact that has on you. When someone says something mean to you, how long does that stay with you? Oh, forever. Forever, for days, weeks, years. I remember, oh. <clears throat> but if you talk sense to a fool and they call you a foolish, it's because they don't know any better. If I wouldn't talk to that dad and said, Here's what you're doing to your family. Here's what you're doing to the world. Here's what you're doing to life. You'd probably be like, I'm sure we all know this person. Nah. The nah guy. You know, today's Tuesday. Nah. You know, the sky here is blue. Nah. Oh, yeah. No. yeah, nah. For real? Nah. <laughs> we all know that dude. He's usually got curly hair, too, huh? <laughs> we know what we're talking about. <laughs> Bro, shots are fired. <laughs> I'm just saying there's a tendency. <laughs> add curly hair to that way, so like, add... Oh, uh, that would be style? Style. Style? Yeah. All right. There we go, style. Uh, oh, I got the old, 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 old people. Um, do I have age up there? I think I probably figured they wouldn't live long enough to, to check it off. Oh my god! <laughs> Can I mark handicap for the guys? Yeah. <laughs> right. huh, how, do, how do I not have age up there? Maybe it's just too close to home. <laughs> I'll add it. Oh, other. Add other. We can add ages among there too. Other. Other. Age. There we go. Yay! Alright. We're making some progress today, really. Alright. So, the, now the issue is. We all know these people, that if you, talk, well, if you talk sense to them, they're the not nah person or they're any of these things, now the question becomes, what do you do with it? Um, have you ever heard the, the saying, don't cast your pearls before swine? You know, what, are, what, what, what are swine? Pigs. Pigs. So you have pearls, pearls are precious, would you, would you put your pearls in front of a pig? Why not? Your pigs are going to eat it, and what are they going to do with it? Poop it out. Poop it out and make your and they're gonna they're gonna make your, they're gonna make your stinky. Yeah, and your pearls are they're still pearls. You can still scrub them off and everything and wipe wipe them off, but you have to go through all their all their crap to do that. What is it? They're like digest or something? I don't know if they would digest any of it. They might. They like but, die on like choking on But how would you feel if someone gave you like a, a bracelet made of those pearls and go, I want you to know I fished these at a pig shit for you. <laughs> the most romantic thing the yeah, if you took them off and sold them to somebody without telling them where it came from, they'd still be valuable, yes? But the thing is, is that once you know where they've been, they're not quite so valuable. Anyway, if you can't, your, your, your wisdom, your knowledge, the things that you've learned, that's, those are your pearls. Don't cast them in front of pigs. Pigs don't appreciate pearls. They would just be like, ooh, it's you know, pearls, and then they eat them. Or they go, ooh, it's bacon, and they'd eat bacon, too, if you gave a pig bacon. They're like, oh, it's a hamburger. They would, they would eat whatever you gave them, and they wouldn't make any use of it, any, any, differ, any differential use of it. So if a, you, know, you wouldn't cast your pearls in front of a pig because the pig's not going to appreciate it. The same becomes true about your wisdom. To get wisdom, it, I mean, it costs you a lot. It costs you a lot. Think about if you're somebody who's learning a lot and you're in school. Think about how much time... You're investing in that. How many hours a day? If you're somebody who's getting nothing out of school, think about how much time out of your day you're investing in for your, yeah, you're investing in other things. Like you're here, but you're not really here. You know, like um, you know, you're on your phone and you're and you're not doing anything useful with it. And I mean, useful even by your own estimation. Like if I were to ask you, is this if what you did was that useful in some way? I guess it entertained me, but is entertainment really the chief value of, of life? Like the feeling good was the chief value of life. 
wouldn't we all agree that we should all be in here just stoned and drunk the entire time that we come to school? And, sh and should we be that way our whole lives? And we might, and we might suddenly go, yeah! And I'll ask you, do you want your dad that way? Oh, dang. You want your dad drunk and high all the time? Yeah! Come on, dad! Let's drive somewhere and buy more drugs now that we're drunk. <laughs> really? Would you really want that for your, for your, for your dad? And why would you do it for yourself? Because if you're especially, if you're going to be a dad someday, if you're going to be a mom someday, do you really want that? I'll stop then. Uh-huh, I bet your dad said the same thing. Mine did. And he left. fatherless. <laughs> yeah. A lot of us grow up fatherless, even if he's, even if he's there. You know? I know, I know, but that's the kind of the thing. It's like, do you want to be better than yourself? Do you want to be better than the people we criticize, our parents? Do we want to be better than the society that we, that we jam our hands in our pockets and criticize? The world's so terrible, we don't deserve dogs. Shut up. You know, I hear that kind of stuff all the time. Like, dogs are so sweet, we don't deserve them because they're so wonderful. It's like, really? Do you, do you make the world a better place like that, then? You know? Do you do that? Are you a kind, sweet individual? I mean, I'm kind and sweet to people who are kind and sweet to me. Well, then you're not kind and sweet. You're, you're, a chemi you're a bundle of chemicals reacting to other chemical interactions in the universe. Other people have more control over your behavior than you do. If you can't be kind and sweet in the face of people who are mean and angry towards you, then you're not really a kind and sweet person. You're just a bundle of chemicals responding to their stimuli. And that's not a choice. That's just, you know, chemistry. We'd know that if we studied it, though. <laughs> There's a place where we might know it. And so the idea is that you can, you can cash, you know, to get, to get your wisdom, it costs you a lot. It costs you life experiences. It costs you successes and failures. If you, if you know a lot, that means you spend a lot of time studying. That's cost you a lot of time because you spend time studying rather than doing something else. So all of the wisdom, all of the learning, everything that you've gained in your life costs you a lot. Even the money that you have costs you time that you could be doing, you could, that you could be using for something else. Everything that you accumulate costs you a lot. And by the way, everything you don't accumulate costs you a lot also. It's going to end up costing you a lot down the road. We're going to pay for it one way or the other. We can, pay to, we can pay to accumulate or we can pay to not accumulate. Whatever it is. And you'll find that the people who, who, paid, who, who, who did not accumulate are trying to get a, the people who did to pay for it. I see this all the time. I see people in class, I just kind of watch them. They've done absolutely just jack shit the whole semester. And I'll see them like trying to get answers from somebody else. So that person got to sit there on their phone, got to do absolutely nothing, talk to people around them, and then you're going to give them the answers to it? In that case, I'm not sure who the fool there really is. You're going you're gonna to work and you're going to let them not, and then you're going to give them the answers to everything. I have students who show me these messages that people circulate about the answers to tests. It's like, really? All the answers to tests are right in front of you. And yet you're going to be willfully ignorant to not look into a text and develop a skill set. So what are you going to do someday when you're at work and, you, and there's a problem in front of you? Are you going to sit in a group chat and just wait for the answer? That's being willfully ignorant. That's sacrificing the long term for the immediate right now. You know, the biggest problem in my life right now is not having the answer to number four. Really? A multiple choice question worth one point is worth your integrity. You think that that's the biggest problem in your life. Nah, I mean, if, 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 if you're willing to sacrifice your integrity for the answer to a question, you have a much bigger problem in your life than the answer to number four. And you're going to have much bigger problems in your life for that. Everyone's going to have problems, of course, but what kind of problems are you going to face? Is the problem you're going to face like a downturn in the market because your investments you know, are, are taking a hit? Or is the problem in your, in your life going to be you, you've been laid off now because of a downturn in, in the market and you have no savings, much less investments? Both of those are problems. Both of those are significant problems. The question is going to be which problem do you want to struggle with in your life? And you're going to find that the person who has no savings and the person who's who's now been laid off because of a downturn in the market, that will be the person who comes to the person who's been investing and be like, hey, so can I get the answer to number four? <laughs> can you slide me a few bucks? I promise I'll pay you back. Uh-huh. That's one of the great lies 
ever told in the world, I'll pay you back. Now, I imagine if you understand and you're following this, that you, you're getting it. And if you're not, I understand you probably think I'm very foolish for talking to you like this and telling you all this. I understand. I understand. But, having said that, if a five-year-old calls you stupid, does it bother you? No, no. I hope not. For some people, it does. I understand that. I'm not stupid. And you'll kick the kid. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> But if a five-year-old calls you foolish, hopefully it does not bother you. Why? Because you know something that they don't know, which is that they don't know. Okay. You know what they don't know. They don't know, and, and you realize you just can't know. And you have to keep that in mind with some people. You just can't know. How do I come in here every day and not lose my mind? Because I understand something. I know something that you guys don't know. Guess what that is? That you don't know. Always. <laughs> I know something, which is that you don't know. And by the way, I'm also, what allows me to be empathetic about that is that I know something also. Guess what I know? What do you know? What I don't know. Oh my. I don't, yeah, I, know, I, know that, I know that there's something I don't know, and therefore I don't even know what I don't know. And I can look at you guys and go, ah, they don't know what they don't know. And then I, now I could walk right, very arrogantly, <clears throat> but I know. But guess what? I don't know what I don't know either. And so I can see us as being together in this boat. I know more than you do. Heck yeah. I know I have some students who will say, oh, I'm smarter than my teacher. Nah. <laughs> it's time to get Edgar in here. What would you say, Edgar? Nah, that's right. You don't know. You know. Your teachers know more than you. You might have more brain power. You might have some different life experiences, but they have life experience on you in droves. They have everybody, every teacher you have has an education. They know a lot that you don't know. And we can arrogantly say, nah. We can say willfully ignorant, nah. <laughs> or, geez, maybe get something out of them. I don't know, maybe treat your classes like the, like the Vikings treated Newfoundland. Show up, take what you want, and leave. I don't know. But when they call you foolish, hopefully it doesn't bother you. Because you just realize something. You don't, that they don't know what they don't know. And it's not going to be an arrogant, like, I'm better than them. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No. It's just, you know, it's just people being people, man. You could be pissed at them, or you could love them anyway. And, what is it? Three quarters y'all are failing? I love you anyway, man. I'm not mad at you. I hope you guys turn it around. I hope you guys get better at things. I hope you guys learn. I hope that even if you're not learning here, I hope you're learning somewhere. Or, geez, I hope you are learning here. But I get that all the time. I'm learning a lot. You have 11%. <laughs> That's just because I don't do anything. <laughs> God, come on, don't be foolish. Do something. Get credit for it anyway, right? It's like life. You're in life, you might as well get credit for being in life. I don't know. What do I know? I'm, I don't know what I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I don't know. I'm foolish. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? That was great.